Welcome to EHS 109 Bloodborne Pathogens Online Training Module. OSHA, also known as the Occupational Safety and Health Administration Bloodborne Pathogen Standard 29 CFR 1910.1030. Bloodborne pathogens means pathogenetic microorganisms that are present in human blood and can cause disease in humans. These pathogens include, but are not limited to, hepatitis B and C viruses and human immunodeficient virus, also known as HIV. Purpose Limit occupational exposure to blood and other potentially infectious materials. Since any exposure could result in transmissions of bloodborne pathogens, which could lead to disease or death. Scope covers all employees who could be reasonably anticipated as the result of performing their job duties to come into contact with blood or other potential infectious materials. OSHA has not attempted to list all occupations where exposure could occur. Good Samaritan acts, such as his coworker with a nosebleed, would not be considered occupational exposure. Bloodborne diseases. Many diseases are transmitted by contact with blood. Of primary concern, hepatitis, caused by hepatitis B and C viruses, AIDS, and HIV-related diseases result from human immunodeficiency virus HIV infection. Bloodborne disease transmission. Roots of transmission in the workplace. Skin. Through broken, non-intact, or chapped skin. Contamination of cut, graze, lesion, rash. Cuts or puncture wounds with contaminated sharp objects or equipment. Mucosal membranes. Linings of eyes, nose, and mouth. Permeable allows viruses to pass through. Stages of HIV infection. 1. Initial flu-like symptoms. Within a mouth of exposure, brief illness. Symptoms include fever, enlarged lymph nodes, muscle and joint pain, fatigue, diarrhea, and rash. 2. No symptoms, period. Can last months or years. Individual can transmit disease during this time. Antibodies develop 6 to 12 weeks after exposure. 3. Persistent, generalized, enlarged lymph nodes, usually lasting more than 3 months. 4. AIDS. Immune system failure. T4 lymphocytes decrease. Opportunistic disease appears. Attacks nervous system. Epidemic update 2018. People living with HIV, 37.9 million. New infections, 1.7 million. AIDS-related deaths, 770,000. Hepatitis B or C. HBV slash HCV. Serum hepatitis. Attacks liver cells and replicates in them. Virus can enter body via blood-to-blood -blood contact, sexual contact, broken skin, mucosal membranes, needle sticks, etc. Infected individuals can transmit disease to others. Can result in severe liver damage, liver cancer, death if not treated immediately, systemic infection, symptoms of acute hepatitis, jaundice, Skin, eyes becoming yellow, dark urine, abdominal pain, enlargement of the liver, nausea, vomiting, fatigue, loss of appetite, i.e. flu-like symptoms, sometimes joint pain, rash, and fever. Hepatitis B vaccine. Safe. Current vaccines not based on human products. Three doses required. Zero, one, and six months over 90% protection, few side effects, fast facts on hepatitis B, number of new acute infections per year has declined 
from an average of 260,000 in the 1980s to about 22,200 in 2017. 1.25 million chronically infected. Highest rate is in the 20-49 year old age category. Fast facts on hepatitis C. Number of new acute infections per year has declined from an average of 240,000 in the 1980s to about 44,700 in 2017. An estimated 2.4 million people in the U.S. are living with hepatitis C infection. Most infections are due to illegal injection of drug use. The same is true of hepatitis. Both hepatitis B and hepatitis C are contagious liver diseases that cause an inflammation of the liver. Early symptoms are a lot like a mild flu, including fatigue, nausea, abdominal pain, and vomiting. Extreme fatigue is a very common symptom of hepatitis C. Both hepatitis B and hepatitis C can be either acute or chronic. Acute hepatitis B and hepatitis C are short-term illnesses that occur within the first six months after someone is exposed to the hepatitis B virus or the hepatitis C virus, respectively. Acute hepatitis B can sometimes lead to chronic hepatitis B infection, which is a long-term illness that occurs when the hepatitis B virus remains in a person's body. Chronic hepatitis B is a serious disease that can result in long-term health problems and even death. Fortunately, a vaccine is available for hepatitis B. If you are exposed to blood and other potentially infectious materials on a regular basis as part of your job, the hepatitis B vaccines will be made available to you by your employer at no cost. More than 90% of those vaccinated will develop immunity to hepatitis B. Acute hepatitis C infection, however, often leads to chronic infection. Chronic hepatitis C is a serious disease that can result in long-term health problems or even death. Unfortunately, there is no vaccine for hepatitis C. Universal Precautions Approach to infection control in which all human blood, certain bodily fluids, and contaminated equipment slash instrumentation are treated as if they are known to be infected for HIV, HBV, HCV, and other bloodborne pathogens. The big question to ask right now is, how do you know if someone is infected with a bloodborne pathogen? And the common sense answer is, you don't. So what should you do? How do you protect yourself? Take universal precautions, meaning treat all blood and other body fluids as if they are infectious, because you just don't know. And because you don't know who is infected and who isn't, it's vital to use personal protective equipment, work practice controls, and engineering controls to reduce exposure risks for all employees. Universal precautions apply to all specimens containing blood, serum, plasma, semen, vaginal excretions, bodily fluids containing blood or cerebrospinal, synovial, pleural, peritoneal, peritocardial, amniotic, saliva in a dental setting, breast milk, unfixed human tissue, organs, or cells, bodily fluids of unknown origins. Casual contact with common fluids, tears, sweat, urine, feces, nasal excretions, saliva, non-dental. Universal precautions not required since transmission of HIV and HBV not substantiated. Exception, human bite transmission of HBV with saliva to blood. Personal protective equipment. PPE, face and eyes, appropriate to the task, glasses with side shields, goggles, face shields, mask, hands, gloves, appropriate to the task, latex, nitrile, rubber, cleaning only, vinyl, do not use, proper removal and disposal of gloves, 
To properly remove and dispose of your gloves, follow along in the images in this slide, starting with the top left. Using your dominant hand, pinch and pull the surface of the glove away from your hand towards your fingertips. This can be seen, be seen in the image on the top right. Once the glove has been removed from your hand, do not touch it with your ungloved hand. Use your gloved hand to make a fist around the glove that you have removed, demonstrated in the middle left photo. Using the hand that no longer has a glove on it, slide your finger underneath the glove and pinch the interior of the glove. This can be seen in the middle right image. At this point, you would continue to roll the glove off of your hand in which the glove is being turned from the inside outward. Continue to pull that glove slowly, carefully towards your fingertips until it has been removed from your hand. This can be seen in the image on your bottom left. Once the gloves have been removed, properly dispose of them within the appropriate waste receptacle, which can be seen in the image on the bottom right. Hand washing. When you wash your hands, you must wash your hands for 20 seconds with soap and water. This is the recommended amount of time according to the Center of Disease Control, also known as the CDC. Disinfection, surfaces, equipment, or instrumentation. Start with soap and water. If corrosion is not a concern, follow up with a bleach solution. This freshly prepared bleach solution should be a 10% solution of the bleach and water, or a one to 10 dilution of bleach and water. If corrosion is a concern, follow up with a 70% isopropyl alcohol solution in water. Disinfection, spills. Pour a freshly prepared 10% bleach solution on the spill, working your way in a circular fashion from the outside towards the center. Allow this solution to have a contact time of 30 minutes prior to removing. Wash, wash with soap and water and then rinse. Dispose of all materials as hazardous materials. Sharps containers. Contaminated sharps and needle disposal. Puncture resistant, color coded, labeled, leak proof. Steps to take when exposure occurs. In the event that an individual is exposed to a potentially infectious material, take the following steps. Wash the affected area thoroughly with soap and water. Get immediate medical attention. Notify your supervisor. Complete an incident report. Allow medical to follow up with the appropriate testing prior to healthcare professionals' written opinion.